rescued by Allah to repent tonight not tomorrow I ask you by Allah to repent now to renew your repentance now if you were to die at least you will die with this beautiful intention I'd like you to think amongst all the sins that you are making I want you to think of only one sin just one just one I don't want to know it but you think of one sin that you've been doing for so many years maybe a sin which you do not want to quit just one sin think, think, think. the ayahs قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتْهُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O my servants who transgressed against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives all the sins. Allah forgives all the sins. I went out with girls. Allah forgives all the sins. I went out with boys. I dated. Allah forgives all the sins. I committed adultery. Allah forgives all the sins. I drank alcohol. Wallahi, Allah forgives all the sins. I'm not wearing hijab. Allah forgives all the sins. Inna Allah yaghfiru al-dhunuba. Jami'a, jami'a. Allah forgives jami'a. In Arabic, jami'a means all, everything, all, all jami'a. It does not matter what sin you have committed. Okay. I'm going to ask you, please. Right now, by Allah, I beg you, I beg you, quit the sin right now, tonight. Right now, please make an intention to quit it. Please, I beg you. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. My talk today is about a very very important topic. And this topic, ladies and gentlemen, some people think it is only meant for the sinners. Some people think that this topic is only meant for the sinners. But actually this topic is meant for all of us, including myself and including all the shuyukh that are here. I'm not only speaking to myself, but I'm speaking to everyone here. The topic of repentance, tawbah. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullah alayhi, one of the pious predecessors, he said, أَكْثَرُ nas لَا يَعْرِفُونَ قَدَرَ tawbah." He says the majority of the people do not know the reality of tawbah. He says the entire deen is embedded in something called repentance, tawbah. No wonder why the ta'ib, the repenter, he deserves to be called Habibullah. He deserves to be the beloved of Allah, a ta'ib. Repentance is not only meant for the sinners. And I'm going to give you the evidence from the Quran and from the Sunnah. My aim today is to make everyone cry. And you will see why. And please don't leave. Please, I beg of you. Because I do have a message that I want to deliver to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا 
please forgive me and forgive my um, I lost it I'm not supposed to be here but because I love you Allahi I came here otherwise I could have been sleeping and you know and taking medicine because I lost my voice but listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نصوحا Oh you who believe Allah does not say oh you sinners Oh you sinners He didn't say that He says oh you who believe يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نصوحا عسى ربكم أن يكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار Oh you who believe repent to Allah توبة نصوحا A sincere repentance a true repentance and you will see what I mean by sincere repentance a sincere tawbah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا and repent to Allah all together he's not only talking to the sinners again he's talking to all of us and this ayah has been revealed at the time of the Sahaba and at the time of the Prophet Muhammad we're talking about the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Allah is revealing this to tell them so you cannot tell me why should I make tawbah you cannot say that to me you cannot say, I just prayed Fajr in Jama'ah, in the Masjid. I don't need to make Tawbah. You cannot say that to me. You cannot say, I just came back from Umrah. Well, I just did Hajj this year. Why should I make Tawbah? You cannot say that to me. Even the Prophet Muhammad Allah tells him, Ya ayyuhal Nabi, ittaqillah. Ya ayyuhal Nabi, ittaqillah. If you tell a Muslim today, especially Arab, you tell him, Ittaqillah, he may say, what did I do? Why are you tell me to fear Allah? Some Muslims, especially some Arabs, and I'm one of them, sometimes we take it as an insult. When somebody tells you, fear Allah. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells his prophet, oh your prophet, fear Allah. Doesn't the Prophet fear Allah? Doesn't Prophet Muhammad fear Allah? Why is Allah telling him to fear him? وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Allah says, and those who do not repent, they are the wrongdoers. So you have two teams. You have Ta'ibun. And you have Zalimun. Ta'ibun, Zalimun. Repenters, wrongdoers. Who do you want to be with? There is no three groups. There is only two. Ta'ibun, Zalimun. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Those who do not repent, they are sincerely, they are surely the wrongdoers. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Muhammad says in this hadith narrated by Ibn Umar. Ibn Umar is the son of Umar ibn Khattab. He says that the Prophet Muhammad says, Ayyuhan nas, tubu ila Allah, wastaghfiruh. Tubu ila Allah, wastaghfiruh. Fa inni atubu ila Allahi, wa astaghfiruhu akthar min mi'ata marrah. Oh people, the Prophet used to say, Oh people, repent to Allah and seek forgiveness. I seek forgiveness more than 100 times a day. This is in Sahih Muslim. In Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet says, another narration, I seek forgiveness 70 times a day. Who is he? Rasulullah, whom Allah has forgiven all his sins. He's saying, I seek forgiveness 70 times a day. In one narration, 100 times a day. If this is Rasulullah, if this is Rasulullah, how about you and I? How many times should we seek forgiveness for? 
How many times? How many times should we repent? Excuse me, brothers and sisters, excuse me. If you still think repentance is not made for you, when was the last time you had Khatm al-Qur'an? When was the last time you recited the Qur'an? When was the last time you finished completely the recitation of the Qur'an? Ramadan? Are you Ramadanian? When was the last time you prayed Fajr in Masjid, in Jama'ah? When was the last time you were obedient to your parents? When was the last time you made dhikr? When was the last time you gave sadaqah? When was the last time? When was the last time? When you were coming here, didn't you talk about haram? When you came here, didn't you look at haram? Yeah, and you did not look at haram. You came, driving, walking, you did not look at anything wrong. You did not say anything wrong. We sin day in, day out. We sin every day. But we don't realize it. This is why Allah says in the Quran, repent to Allah. Jamia, Jamia, all together, all together, repent to Allah. Ask him for forgiveness. Ubashiruk, I have a glad tidings for you. You may say, repentance for me? Even for me? I go out with girls. I go out with boys. I'm on the net watching haram. I gambled, I drank alcohol, I dealt with riba, I killed someone, I did so many haram things. Can I still repent? Yes, you can. Can Allah accept me? Wallahi, Allah can. Wallahi, He will. Despite all that what I've done, despite all which you have done, Wallahi, Allah will forgive you. If you sincerely repent to him. The door of repentance is wide open. Until death reaches the collarbone. Huh? This is your collarbone. That's when the door of repentance will be closed. Or when the sun rises from 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 the west other than that the door of repentance is wide open listen to what the prophet muhammad says this is in sahih in bukhari and muslim narrated by abu hurairah yanzilu rabbuna yanzilu rabbuna kulla layla the prophet says allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down every night Every night, Allah comes down to the first heaven. And then he looks at the people, his servants. Look, this is, if you just understand this hadith, Wallahi, this will help you shed tears. If you only understand this hadith, Allah, the creator, he comes down in a way that befits his majesty. He comes down in the first heaven every night. Every night. Every night. And he looks and he says, who is asking for forgiveness, I shall forgive him. Who is supplicating me, I shall answer his supplication. Who is asking me, I shall give him. Allah, he does not need us. Yet, he's coming down saying, who's repenting, I shall accept his repentance. Who's asking for forgiveness, I shall forgive him. Who's asking me, who's supplicating me, I shall give him. He does that every night until the, until dawn, Fajr time. In Sahih Muslim, hadith narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam says, Inna Allah yabsutu yadahu bin nahari liyatuba musi al-layli wa yabsutu yadahu bin layli yatuba musi al-nahari. Allah stretches out his hand during the night so that the ones who are committing sins during the day can repent. 
and Allah stretches out his hand during the day so that people who are committing sins during the night can repent. The door of repentance is wide open. Wide open. Allah is waiting for you to come to him. Allah wants you to come to him. And he is Al-Ghani. One of his names is Al-Ghani. What is Al-Ghani? Al-Ghani, the free of want. The free of want, he does not need us. He is free of want, he is free of needs. He is Al-Ghani. Yet, he is asking you, calling you, inviting you to repent. الملك صبر عليك كثير الملك سهل لك كثير ويسر لك كثير وستذك كثير وأعطاك كثير الملك he gave you so much. Al Malik, he waited for you so much. Al Malik, he did not expose you so much. He's waiting for you to come back to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Sahihain, in the Sahihain, Bukhari and Muslim narrated by Abu Huraira. Listen to what the Prophet Muhammad says. I have some, some stories that I want to share with you. Just give me a chance. That's all I'm asking of. Please give me a chance to share these stories with you. Some personal ones that have changed my life. But the Prophet says in Sahih and Bukhari and Muslim and Hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira. قال الله تعالى that Allah says أنا عند ظن عبدي بي وَأَنَا مَعَهُ إِنْ ذَكَرَنِي Allah says, I am with my servant as long as he remembers me. If he remembers me, I remember him. If he remembers me in a mala, in a gathering, I shall remember him in a better gathering, the gathering of the angels. And listen to this. If he comes to me in a space of a hand length, I should come to him in a space of an arm length. If he comes to me walking, I will come to him running. If he comes to me walking, I will come to him running. All you have to do, excuse me, I have to say this. I have to say this. We have given, we have tried everything. We have tried everything. Why don't you give Allah a chance? That's all. Why don't you give Allah one chance? And see. Oh Allah, you will not regret. Just give him one chance. Just try him. Try him. What are you going to lose? What are you going to lose? Give him a chance. Knock at his door and see. Never, never despair from the mercy of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Qul ya ibadiya al-lazina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. قل يا عبادي الذين أصرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلموا له من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب ثم لا تنصرون 
واتبعوا أحسن ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب بغتة وأنتم لا تشعرون أن تقول نفس أن تقول نفس يا حسرة على ما فرطت في جنب الله أن تقول نفس يا حسرة يا حسرة على ما فرطت في جنب الله وإن كنت لمن الساخرين أو تقول حين ترى العذاب لو أن لي كرة فأكون من المحسنين بلى بلى قد جاءتك آياتي فكذبت بها واستكبرت وكنت من الكافرين I was reciting this ayat in the UK in one of my seminars one brother acted up one brother in the audience acted up he was possessed jinn spoke more than four five hundred people were sitting and it was live the jinn understood the jinn spoke I held the brother in front of everyone and I kept on reciting the Quran. And the brother I was acting up. I took him out. Some people came with me. I said, What's your name? He said, Kevin. Come out. Enemy of Allah. He says, I want to become a Muslim. I want to become a Muslim. A jinn wants to become a Muslim. A jinn understood and wants to become a Muslim. I said, easy. Repeat after me. La ilaha. I swear by Allah. The one who holds my soul. I swear by Allah. He opened his mouth. His tongue became so crippled. So crippled he could not say it. People were with me, they were crying. His tongue was like this. This is what he did. He took his thumb, uh, uh, like this, he pulled it out, and he says, Allah. I said, Ilaha. He said, Ilaha. Illa Allah. Until he repeated the Shahada in front of everyone. He came out, alhamdulillah, with the permission and the will and the grace of Allah. The ayahs, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O oh my servants who transgressed against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives all the sins. Allah forgives all the sins. I went out with girls. Allah forgives all the sins. I went out with boys. I dated. Allah forgives all the sins. I committed adultery. Allah forgives all the sins. I drank alcohol. Wallahi, Allah forgives all the sins. I'm not wearing hijab. Allah forgives all the sins. Inna Allah yaghfiru al-dhunuba. Jami'a. Jami'a. Allah forgives. Jami'a. In Arabic. Jami'a. Means all, everything. All. All. Jami'a. It does not matter what sin you have committed. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? How many people have you killed? How many? How many have you killed? How, how many? Nobody? Yahi! Allah has forgiven the man who killed 100 lives. Wouldn't he forgive you? You did not kill anyone. Wouldn't he forgive you? In Sahih Bukhari, the man from Ben Israel, the children of Israel, who killed 99 lives. It's a very well known story. 99 people he killed. He went to uh, uh, a man who told him, he asked him, I want to repent, but I killed 99 guys, 99 people, 99 souls. Can I repent? Can Allah accept me? He said, how can Allah accept you? You killer, you sinner. Allah will not accept you. And then he killed him too. Now there's 100. 
He wants to repent. He's feeling the remorse, the regret. He wants to repent. So he went to Alim. You see the difference between Alim, Abid. Abid, he does not have Ilm. He went to Alim, asked him, I want to repent, but I killed 100 lives. Can Allah accept me? The man said, of course Allah will accept you. Of course Allah will accept your repentance. The only thing you have to do, you have to move out from this bad environment. Here's the key, here's the key. The key is, you have to move from this bad environment. You have to leave the bad friends. You have to leave the filthy environment. You have to come out. The environment you're in, it's not conducive to something good, to tawbah. You have to remove, stay away from that environment. Stay away from the bad sohbah, the bad companionship. And come out. To a good environment. Anybody amongst you killed the uncle of Prophet Muhammad? Who who killed him? Who who's the killer? Anybody here? Did you kill uh, the uncle of Prophet Muhammad? Hamza, Hamza. Who killed Hamza? Did, did you kill Hamza? Are you the one? Wahshi. If Allah forgave Wahshi, who killed the uncle of Rasulullah, wouldn't he forgive you? Wouldn't he forgive you? Think. Never despair out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why there's so many virtues of tawbah. Please, please, please. The virtues of tawbah. If you just understand the virtues of tawbah, listen, ya salam, if you only understand this part, just this part, if you do not get nothing from my speech, if nothing has touched you, just understand this part. One of the greatest virtues of tawbah is you will earn the love of Allah to you. Do you know what that means? How do you feel when your husband tells you, I love you? When your wife tells you, I love you, how do you feel? How do you feel when your father says, I love you? When your mother says, I love you, how do you feel? How would you feel if I were to tell you Last night I saw a dream. And I saw Prophet Muhammad in the dream. And he came and he told me, tell the people of Oslo in this conference, tell them that I love them. How would you feel? If I were to tell you that, how would you feel? How would you feel if I were to tell you, Abu Bakr loves you? How would you feel? How would you feel if I were to tell you Umar ibn Khattab loves you? How would you feel? Umar, Uthman, Ali? No, no, no Umar, no Uthman, no Abu Bakr, no Ali. Prophet Muhammad. No, no Prophet Muhammad. How if I tell you Allah loves you? How would you feel? Do you know what that means? You know what that means when Allah loves you? You know what happens? You know what you get when Allah loves you? Listen, in Bukhari. The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says, Bukhari and Muslim actually, narrated by Abu Hurairah. When Allah loves you, he calls Jibreel, and he, Jibreel, and he says to him, Oh Jibreel, I love so and so. And he mentions your name. Oh Jibreel, love him. Oh Jibreel, love him. Jibreel, brothers and sisters, he does not have no right to question or to think. Can I love him? La, la. Allah told him, love him. Jibreel will love you. And Jibreel will call upon the people of the heavens, the angels. Oh, angels. Allah and I love so and so. So you love him. And the angels will love you. And Jibreel will call on the people of the earth. And he will say, oh, people of the earth, Allah. I and the angels love so and so, so you love him. And everybody on earth will love you. Why? Because Allah loves you. 
Why? Because you have repented to him. Because you have repented to him. You know what that means? You call upon Allah. This is what happens when you call upon Allah. Allah says, لَبَّيْكَ abdi." Yes, my servant. But when you are a sinner, and you repent to Allah, and you invoke him, you know what he says? He says, لَبَّيْكَ 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 abdi." Abdi رَجْعَ إِلَيَّ Yes, my servant. Yes, my servant. Yes, my servant. Ask me. And Allah says, my servant has come back to me. My servant has come back to me. Which is another virtue of tawbah. You make Allah happy. Uh, who wants to make Allah happy? Anybody who does not want to make Allah happy? Allah is God Almighty. Whether you're a Muslim or not Muslim. Anybody who does not want to make Allah happy. I don't want to make Allah happy. Okay. Everybody wants to make Allah happy. Alhamdulillah. So when you repent, you make Allah happy. Do you want the evidence? I have the evidence. I have the evidence. The Prophet Muhammad says in Bukhari and Muslim, and listen to this, narrated by Anas. This is narrated by Anas. The Prophet says, Allah, lallahu ashaddu farahan. Allah is happier. Listen, please, please. Wallahi, my voice is killing me. Allah is happier. Is happier. Please leave your iPhone and I, 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 anything. Leave them for now. Leave them for now, please. And concentrate with what Allah is saying. Allah is saying. The Prophet is saying that Allah says, Lallahu afrahu. Allah is happier. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Allah is happier, happier than a man who is traveling. A man, imagine, imagine, imagine. A man is traveling in the desert. A man, please, please. A man is traveling in the desert. I don't want anything. Just sit down. A man is traveling in the desert. And he has his camel. He has his camel. Or he has his donkey. Whatever he has. And on that donkey, he's got everything. All the food, the provision that he needs in his journey. So he's traveling. All of a sudden, he loses his camel. His donkey, his mule. He loses his donkey in the middle of the desert. And that donkey or that mule or that camel, he's got all his provisions, all the food and the water in the middle of the desert. He has no iPhone. He doesn't have no iPhone. He doesn't have no cell phone. He doesn't have no pagers. He has nothing to call for help. So he looks, looks around. His camel ran away. Khalas in the desert. He's gonna die. He found a tree. So he goes and he sits under the shade of the tree, waiting for what? Waiting for the angel of death. Waiting for death. He's going to die. He lost all the means of survival. So as he's sitting like this, as the prophet says, All of a sudden, he raises his head, and then he saw his camel came back, sitting next to him, with all the food and the water. Imagine with me, imagine. Few minutes, he was going to die thinking about death. Now, he sees his camel with all the food and the water. He becomes so happy, so happy. He says, he wants to thank Allah. He says, oh Allah, you are my servant and I am your God. Look what he says. Oh Allah, thank you. You are my servant and I am your God. He makes this very, very, very severe mistake. Off of what? Off of happiness. This is an analogy. The Prophet says, Allah is happier than this man when you repent to him. When you come to him, when you give him a chance, Allah becomes happier than this man. Anybody wants children? Anybody wants money, wealth, good money, halal money, 
Anybody wants health, good health? You know what it is? I'll give you the key right now. And the key is in the Quran. It's in Tawbah. It's in Tawbah. Look what Allah says. Nuh, he says to his people. Nuh, he says to his people. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينٍ Nuh, he's telling his people, Astaghfirullah, seek repentance, seek forgiveness from Allah. What you will get in return, this is what you will get in return. Rain, money, rain, khairat. And after money, banin, what banin? Children, sisters, if you want children, make lots of istighfar. Brothers, if you want children, you've been asking Allah for a kid, and you have not had a chance to have a baby. Is seek istighfar. Astaghfirullah, repent to Allah. Inshallah, Allah would provide you and bless you with a kid. You want a good job? You want a good job? Here's the key, istighfar. Depression, sisters? Are you depressed? Anxiety? Anxiety, anyone? Stress, anyone? Stress? I have the key. The key, the Prophet Muhammad says, Malazim al istighfar, Ja'alallahu lahu min kulli ham min faraja, wa min kulli karbin makhraja, wa razaqahu min haythu la yahtasib. The Prophet says, Whosoever consistently keeps making istighfar, seeking forgiveness from Allah, what will happen to him? Ja'alallahu lahu min kulli ham min faraja, wa karbin makhraja, wa razaqahu min haythu la yahtasib. Allah will alleviate his pain, his stress, his, dis- his, his distress, his anxiety, his depression, and Allah will provide him from ways and avenues he has never thought of. Khair, khair. Allah will provide you from ways you have never thought of. It's all in istighfar. So many virtues of istighfar and tawbah. I ask you by Allah. I ask you by Allah to repent tonight. Not tomorrow. I ask you by Allah to repent now. To renew your repentance now. If you were to die, at least you will die with this beautiful intention. I have a story for you. Story of a boy by the name of Ahmed. This story has touched my heart and affected my life personally. His name is Ahmed. Coming back from Bangkok in the airport, the Sheikh was telling the story. He went to pray as these airports, they have terminals, and these terminals, they have a musalla. They have a prayer for, you know, like a prayer room. So he went to pray, and then he found this boy, young man, crying, crying. So he prayed, and then after the salah, the guy was kept on crying, so he asked him, why are you crying? They happened to be both from the same country. They happened to be both from a very prominent Muslim country. He told him his story, that he went to Bangkok, and he committed fornication, adultery. And he is married. He is married. This young man, he's married. But he went to Bangkok and he committed haram. So now he is feeling sorrow. He's feeling regret. He was feeling so bad. He was crying. So he says, when I go back to my country, I'm going to surrender to the authorities. In that country, they implement, at least in this particular sin, they implement the law. The law of Sharia, with regard to those who commit adultery. So he says, I'm going to surrender to the authorities. The man told him, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Did you repent? He says, yes, I repented, but it's not enough. It's not enough. I have to go and surrender. He says, please don't. Let us talk. They exchanged numbers. They went back home. The sheikh called him on the phone. His name is Ahmed. Salam alaikum, Ahmed. How are you? He said, sheikh, yes. I'm going today to the authorities. He said, please wait, wait. I'm coming to see you. 
Ya Ahmad, he came to sing. And he started talking to him about the mercy of Allah. Ya Ahmad, Allah Ghafur Rahim. Ya Ahmad, Allah is the oft forgiven. Allah, he forgives. Ya Ahmad, Allah loves to forgive. You know, Allah, when you sin, he forgives. Ya Ahmad, Ya Ahmad, Ya Ahmad. The man says, la, 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 I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. I have to go. I have to go. He says, please, give, us, give me some time. Let's talk some more about it. Came Hajj. The Sheikh went for Hajj. During Tawaf, he saw Ahmed. And then he called him, Ya Ahmed, Ya Ahmed. Ahmed looked at him and he ran away. The Sheikh didn't understand. When they went back home, the Sheikh called Ahmed. Ahmed picked up the phone. Ya Ahmed, I saw you in the Haram. I saw you in the Haram. Ahmed says, Yes, Ya Sheikh, I saw you too. But Ya Sheikh, Wallahi, I was so busy with the remembrance of Allah. I did, not anyone, I did not want anybody to disturb me. I'm sorry. I saw you, but I just went to live with Allah. Ya Ahmed, you still want to surrender? Yes, Ya Sheikh, I went to perform hajj, but now I want to go and surrender. Ya Ahmed, please. Ya Ahmed, Allah is al-ghafoor. Ya Ahmed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves to forgive. A few days later, the Sheikh was reading an ayah from the Quran. And listen to this ayah. In Surah Al-Furqan. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ويقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ولا يزنون ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب إلا من تاب إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما He called him. He says, Ahmed, I found it. I found it. I have it. I have the key. I have the solution. It's in the Quran. He came to him. Ahmed, here's what Allah says. Look, this is applicable to your situation, oh, Ahmed. Listen. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. And those who do not associate someone with the worship of Allah. Number one. And those who do not associate someone with the worship of Allah. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And those who do not kill innocent lives. وَلَا يَزْنُونَ And those who do not commit zina. And those who do not commit fornication, adultery. What happened to them if they were to do so? If they were to kill or associate someone with Allah or commit zina, what will happen to them? وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانًا Whosoever does so, he will receive such a very severe chastisement, punishment from Allah, and he will be thrown in hellfire forever and ever. Ahmed is, 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 is like trembling, trembling. His heart is trembling. So what are you telling me? He says, but listen, listen, listen. Here's the next, here's the key. He says, Allah says, accept. Illa, accept, accept. Who? Illa man tab. Illa man tab. Three against three. Three against three. Illa man tab. Illa man tab wa aman. Wa aman. وعمل عملا صالحا شرك قتل زنا إلا من تاب آمن وعمل عملا صالحا except those who repent believe and work righteousness they do righteous deeds they do good deeds what will happen to them what will happen to them إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما. What will happen to them? Allah will not only forgive them, Allah will forgive them and convert all their bad deeds, all your zina, all your zina, all your shirk, all your all your stealing, all the looking into the haram and the net, all the all the cursing, all the swearing, everything, everything, everything. إلا من تاب. What happened? Allah will convert all your bad deeds into good deeds. 
you become new. Ahmed said, that's it, that's it, that's it, this is it, this is it. Now he became happy. He memorized the Quran. Who? Ahmed. He memorized the Quran. And then he started praying in the masjid salawat. Allah blessed him, alhamdulillah, with a kid. One day the sheikh came by his house, he found lots of cars. So he stopped by, he knocked at the door. The maid opened the door. She said, Sheikh, Salamu Alaikum, we wanted to call you. We wanted to call you. Ahmed needs you. Ahmed needs you. What happened? Ahmed is dying. Ahmed is dying. The Sheikh wants to see Ahmed. Ahmed in his final breath. When Ahmed saw the Sheikh, he said, Sheikh, I have one request from you. I have one request. Could you please recite those ayat to me? Could you please recite those verses to me? And then the Sheikh started reciting. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٍ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدُ فِيهِ مُهَانًا إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ أن 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 أحمد السين ريبيت ريبيت وفإلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما أن الله is the forgiving and he is the رحيم the merciful What else do you want? Ghafur, Rahim. Do you know who you're dealing with? Do you know that you're dealing with Allah al Ghafur, Allah al Ghaffar, Allah al Tawab, Allah al Rahim, Allah al Rahman? Before I go, before I go, I'm going to ask you for one last thing. And I will not ask you for anything again. One last thing. I'd like you all to close your eyes. Please. Please. When we do this therapy, people pay lots of money for it. I'm going to give it to you for free. I'm going to help you with something. Please close your eyes. I'd like you to think amongst all the sins that you are making, I want you to think of only one sin. Just one. Just one. I don't want to know it. But you think of one sin that you've been doing for so many years. Maybe a sin which you do not want to quit. Just one sin. Think, think, think. You see yourself committing it? I want to ask you by Allah, look, look. You're committing that sin. How many people have you made unhappy with your sin? You made your parents cry so much. You caused so much suffering. You caused so much suffering with the sin that you've been making. You don't want to quit. You hurt so many people with that sin. You hurt so many people. And Allah keeps giving you chances to come back. But you don't want to quit. You don't want to quit. You even are hurting yourself. You are even hurting yourself doing it. People are begging you to stay away from it. You keep saying, inshallah, inshallah. But you keep doing it. Okay. 
I'm going to ask you, please, right now, by Allah, I beg you, I beg you, quit the sin right now, tonight. Right now, please make an intention to quit it. Please, I beg you. Maybe the people in Syria are suffering because of your sin. The people in Palestine are suffering because of your sin. Because of your sin. Because of my sin. The people in Iraq are suffering because of your sin. I my sin. I beg you. I beg you by the name of Allah. By Allah, the one who created me and created you. Please just quit the sin. Please quit it. Now, not tomorrow. Now I want you to stop it right now. Right now. Please make an intention right now. Please. And look at yourself quitting it. Imagine if you were to stop it. Imagine how many people you make happy. Imagine how many people you make smiling when you quit it. The first are maybe your parents, maybe your spouse, maybe your children, your community. They will be happy because you have quit that sin. Uh, you know what it is? Today is your birthday. This today is your new birthday. Today is your new birthday. Today is a new day for you. You are clean because you have made a sincere intention to repent to Allah. Oh, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations, you have quit the sin. Khalas, alhamdulillah. You have made an intention sincerely to quit that sin. I am congratulating you ahead of time. Alhamdulillah. Don't tell me, why me? Is it going to matter? Yes, it will matter. Yes, it will matter. Just like the man from the people of Israel. In Musa, Musa, he took his people and then they went to ask for rain. Musa went to Allah. Oh Allah, we want rain. Allah told Musa, oh Musa, I'm not sending rain because amongst you, there is one person, there is one man, there is one person who's making so much ma'asi. He is making, indulging in haram, doing so much haram. Oh Musa, because of him, I'm not sending down the rain. Because of that sister who does not want to put hijab. Because of that brother who does not want to pray. Because of that husband who does not want to feel Allah. Because of that person who keeps dishonoring his parents. Because of one person, because of one man because of one woman I am not sending down the rain ask him to leave ask him to leave and I shall send down the rain Musa he goes back to his people and he says oh are you an asi oh you sinner come out because of you Allah is not sending down the rain because of you all of a sudden rain started pouring on them this is a Muslim. Rain started pouring on them. Musa, he speaks to Allah. Moses, he speaks to Allah. He went back and says, Oh Allah, nobody came out. Nobody came out. Yet, you sent down the rain. What happened, oh Allah? Allah tells him, Oh Musa, I have sent down the rain because of that man. He repented to me. He repented to me. Allah said, Musa says, oh Allah, I want to see this person. I want to see this person. I want to see this pious man. Because of whom we were prevented rain. Because of whom you have sent down the rain. I want to see him. Look what Allah says. Allah says, oh Musa, I did not expose him when he was sinning. Do you want me to expose him now that he repented to me? I want you to imagine that you are that person. You are that person. By Allah, by Allah, one last time, I beg you, stop the sin right now. Right now. Right now. Everybody did? I want to see some hands. Everybody did? Or are you still having some doubts? Right now, sincere repentance. Right now. Oh Allah, oh Allah. Oh Allah, you are our witness. As of now, we all, all are making a sincere intention to repent to you. To repent to you. You know, you know, you know. Khalas tonight, tonight, right now, right now, right now. Quit, quit, quit. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Happy birthday to you. 
Hug the person next to you. Congratulate the person next to you. Tell them, tell them congratulations because you, you have repented. Today is your new day. Today is the best day in your life. Today is the best day of your life. You have repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ah. Uh. I know, because before I go, I know some of you may be asking, Sheikh, I'm sorry, I'm scared. I'm scared. Someone may say, I'm scared because I have repented, but I'm scared because I may go and, and do it again. Anybody? I may go back and do it again. You're scared? Like, I may go back and do it again? Okay. Well, here's the key. Here's the key. Allah has the name Al Ghafur, the forgiver. Al Ghafar, the oft forgiven. Al Tawab, the one who accepts repentance. And there is this name which is one of my favorite names of Allah. The name of Allah, Al Afu. Al Afu. You know what Al Afu means? Al-Afu is like the terminator, terminates the sin. He effaces it, he erases it. Al-Ghafur, Al-Ghafur, he will forgive you. But the sin is still there written. The sin is still written in your book of records. Allah may hold you responsibility of judgment, but he will forgive you. But the sin is still there. You will see it when you stand before Allah. But Al-Afu is the one who erases the sins. He effaces them. So ask Allah always, Allahumma inaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anna. Allah al-afu. What does he do? You know what he does? He makes the angels forget your sin. Number one. Number two, he effaces the sins from your book of records. When you stand before him, the sin is not there. Where is the sin? It's gone. Effaced. Live with this name of Allah. Live with the name of Allah Al-Afu. Live with the name of Allah Al-Afu. Always ask Allah, Oh Allah, you are Al-Afu and you love to forgive. Oh Allah, please forgive me. Oh Allah, please forgive me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all the highest level in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you amongst those who will be able to see the face of Allah every day in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you amongst those that will drink from the hands of Rasulullah in Jannah. From the hands of Rasulullah in Jannah. You know, I wanted really to make people cry because one of the signs of the acceptance of repentance is shedding tears. Shedding tears is one of the signs. If you feel bad about your sin, if you feel bad, if you, when I ask one sister, how do you feel? She says, I feel sick in my stomach whenever I think about the sin. I said, Alhamdulillah, that's a sign that Allah has accepted your repentance. How do you feel, brothers, when you think of your sins? Do you feel good? Do you feel bad? Talk to me. Do you feel good? Do you feel bad? Really? Don't lie to me. Do you f yes? Don't lie to me. Do you really feel bad? Do you feel sick in your stomach? Do you feel like you want to throw up? Do you feel mad? Wallahi, this is a sign that Allah has accepted your repentance. Sisters, how do you feel when you, when you think of your sin? Do you feel good? Do you feel really sick? Do you feel bad? Do you feel like a, a remorse, a regret? That's a sign that Allah has accepted your repentance. Congratulations. May Allah bless you all. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.